technology is having a major influence on how training is delivered. The effective development and use of technology for delivering training, such as online learning, requires collaboration. In addition, needs assessment, design, transfer, and evaluation, known as training design, are critical components of the effective use of training technology. Technology is changing learning and training in corporate settings, as well as in grade schools, high schools, colleges, and universities. Traditional training methods, instructor-led classroom training, is still the most popular training method. However, the use of technology for training delivery and instruction is increasing and anticipated to grow in the future. The use of training technologies is expected to increase dramatically in the next decade as technology improves and the cost of technology decreases. New training technologies are unlikely to totally replace face-to-face -face instruction. In development, availability and use of social media such as Twitter and Facebook have the potential to have a significant influence on training and learning. There appear to be generational differences in using and realizing the potential benefits of social media tools. New technologies have made it possible to reduce the costs associated with delivering training to employees, to increase the effectiveness of the learning environment, and to help training contribute to business goals. Technology has made several benefits possible. Employees can gain control over where and when they receive training. Employees can access knowledge and expert systems on an as-needed basis. Employees can choose the type of media, like print, sound, video, and so on, that they want to use in a training program. And employees' accomplishments during training can be monitored. Three of the most important ways that technology has influenced training and learning is that it has provided for greater collaboration, learner control, and a more dynamic learning environment. Technology allows digital collaboration to occur. Digital collaboration is the use of technology to enhance and extend employees' abilities to work together regardless of their geographic proximity. Digital collaboration includes electronic messaging systems, electronic meeting systems, online communities of learning, organized by subject matter, where employees can access interactive discussion areas and share training content. In synchronous communication, trainers, experts, and learners interact with each other live and in real time the same way they would in face-to-face -face classroom instruction. Asynchronous communication refers to non-real-time interactions. That is, persons are not online and cannot communicate with each other without a time delay, but learners can still access information and training resources when they desire them. Learning can be an instructor-driven primary process. That is, instructors present information to learners and practice and applications occurred after instruction has been completed. Many learning environments include only the trainer and learners. The trainer is responsible for delivering content, answering questions, and testing learning. Trainees play a passive role in the learning process. Communication on course content is only one way, from the instructor to the learner. Technology has allowed learning to become more of a dynamic process. The learning environment can be expanded to include greater interaction between learners and the training content, as well as between learners and the instructor. The trainer may help design the instruction, but the instruction is delivered to the learners primarily through technology, such as online learning, simulation, iPods, or iPads. The instructor becomes more of a coach and a resource person to answer students' questions and is less involved in the delivery of content. Learning occurs primarily through exchanges with other learners, using blogs, wikis, or other types of social media training, working on virtual team projects, participating in games, listening, exchanging ideas, and interacting with experts. In the blended learning environment, trainees have access to a blended training curriculum that consists of both online and classroom instruction. Collaboration can occur between learners, between learners and training content, and between learners and instructors, and between learners and experts. A dynamic learning environment likely includes the use of Web 2.0 technologies, including social networking, blogs, wikis, and microblogs, such as Twitter. 
Learner control refers to giving trainees the option to learn through self-pacing exercises, exploring links to other materials, and conversations with trainees and experts. These new training technologies allow for the use of multiple media, including text, graphics, video, and audio. Computer-based training, known as CBT, online learning, e-learning, and web-based training refer to instruction and delivery of training by computer through the internet or the web. All of these training methods can include and integrate into instruction, text, interaction using simulations and games, and video, and collaboration using blogs, wikis, and social networks, and hyperlinks to additional resources. Online learning, e-learning, and web-based training all include delivery of instruction using the internet or web. Interactive video is especially valuable for helping trainees learn technical or interpersonal skills. Online learning can also include opportunities to collaborate with other learners through discussion boards, wikis, and blogs. In online learning, it's possible to enable learners to interact with the training content and other learners to decide how they want to learn. Possible features can be built into online learning. These features include content, collaboration and sharing, links to other resources, learner control, delivery and administration. It is important to note that not all of these features are incorporated into online learning methods. One reason is that certain methods make it difficult to incorporate some of these features. Another reason why a feature may not be incorporated is that the designers may have chosen not to include it. Although e-learning can include all the features to facilitate learning, it may fall short of its potential because, for example, program developers do not include opportunities for trainees to collaborate. Not only can online learning provide the trainee with content, but it also can give learners the ability to control what they learn, the speed at which they progress through the program, how much they practice, and even what they learn. In addition, online learning can allow learners to collaborate or interact with other trainees and experts as well as trainers and can provide links to other learning resources such as reference materials, companies' websites, and other training programs. Also, simulations can be included in e-learning modules to engage learners. The possible features that can be built into online learning give it potential advantages over other training methods. E-learning allows faster and more efficient delivery of training and reduces geographic and time constraints for employees' learning. Some organizations have training requirements that all employees have to complete for the company to meet or qualify for legal requirements. E-learning is a great resource to complete these requirements. E-learning is also easy to update thanks to user-friendly authoring languages such as HTML. Changes can be made on the server that stores the e-learning program. Both research and company experiences suggest that e-learning is effective for a wide range of outcomes including knowledge, skills, and behaviors. In considering whether to move some or all training online, there are several things you have to consider. First is whether online training relates to business goals or employee learning needs. Online training can save costs without compromising quality and provide access to employees who have difficulties attending face-to-face -face training because of their schedules and locations. Moving training online will likely result in development costs related to designing or purchasing training and providing access. One estimate is that it takes eight hours of development time for one hour of face-to-face -face instruction, but that number can be much higher depending on sophistication and complexity of an online course. If online training is developed, employees need to know why it's being used, how they can use it to meet their learning needs, how to find courses, and how to gain benefits from them. The training design or ADDIE model should be used to design e-learning. However, the emphasis at each stage should be slightly different than in typical classroom-style traditional training. Needs assessment, creating a positive online learning experience, learner control, and providing time and space for online learning are three critical issues that need to be addressed for effective online learning, including web-based learning. Needs assessment includes getting management support of online learning. Also, the Information Technology Department needs to be involved in the design of any web-based program. 
Bandwidth refers to the number of bytes and bits, information that can travel between computers per second. Online learning courses should be designed for the available bandwidth on the company's system. Online learning should also try to build interactivity without requiring the use of plugins. A plugin refers to an additional software that needs to be loaded on the computer to listen to sound, watch video, or perform other functions. Plugins can be expensive because they may require the company to pay licensing fees. In the design and development phase, the characteristics of a positive learning environment should be included to help aid retention of learning content and create a meaningful experience that motivates learners. Rapid prototyping refers to an interactive process in which initial design ideas are proposed and provided in rough form in an online working prototype that's reviewed and refined by design team members and key learning stakeholders. Repurposing refers to directly translating an instructor-led, face-to-face training program to an online format. Online learning that merely repurposes an effective training program will still result in ineffective training at some point. Effective online learning uses video, sound, text, and graphics to hold learners' attention. Effective online learning provides trainees with meaningful content related to realistic, on-the-job activities, relevant examples, and the ability to apply content to work problems and issues. Learner control refers to giving trainees the option to learn actively through self-pacing, exercises, exploring links to other material, and conversations with other trainees and experts. Research provides several recommendations for maximizing the benefits of learner control. Self-regulation refers to the learner's involvement with the training material and assessing their progress toward learning. Using formative evaluation of prototypes and web training can be helpful to identify the appropriate length and time of modules. Online learning blurs the distinction between training and work. Employees learn by informal, unstructured contact with experts and peers. Collaboration can involve an exchange among two or more trainees or among the trainer and experts. Linking includes the use of hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are links that allow a trainee to access other websites and include printed materials as well as communication links to experts, trainers, and other learners. Massive open online courses, known as MOOCs, refer to learning that is designed to enroll a large number of learners, massive, accessible to anyone, open, using interactive coursework online, and it has specific start and completion dates, known as courses. To enhance their chances of being effective, MOOCs need to provide an interesting and engaging lecture that's broken up into quizzes and problem sets. Social media are online and mobile technology used to create interactive communications, allowing the creation and exchange of user-generated content. They include blogs, wikis, networks such as Facebook and LinkedIn, micro-sharing sites such as Twitter, and shared media such as YouTube. Social media can be useful for providing links to resources, helping determine future training needs, reinforcing and sustaining learning, being used as a coaching and mentoring tool, and linking learners together. A blog refers to a web page where an author posts entries and readers often comment. A wiki refers to a website that allows many users to create, edit, and update content and share knowledge. Shared media refers to audio or video such as YouTube that can be accessed and shared with others. It's important to support the use of social media and consider that if the ideas, content, and recommendations provided in social media are high quality and match company priorities. Blended learning combines online learning, face-to-face -face instruction, and other methods for distributing learning content and instruction. Blended learning courses provide positive features of both face-to-face -face instructions and technology-based delivery when minimizing the negative features of each. In comparison to classroom delivery, blended learning provides increased learner control, allows for self-directedness, and requires learners to take more responsibility for their learning, consistent with adult learning theory. In comparison to pure online learning, blended learning provides more face-to-face -face social interaction and ensures that at least some of the instruction is presented in a dedicated learning environment. 
the flipped classroom blends online and face-to-face -face instruction. The flipped classroom allows learners to watch lectures, complete online simulations, read books and articles, take quizzes to assess their knowledge and skills, and come to class to work on projects and cases, hear speakers, and interact with faculty. The flipped classroom recognizes that face-to-face -face instruction using lectures can be effective when it's delivered to individual learners rather than a group of learners in the classroom. Lectures can be captured on video and delivered online. This frees up face-to-face -face classroom time for reinforcing and applying knowledge and skills. Serious games refer to games in which the training content is turned into a game but has business objectives. Gamification means that game-based strategies are applied to e-learning programs. The key is to use the fun and motivational aspect of games to help employees acquire knowledge and skills. There are four different types of simulation in games. Some simulations include virtual reality or take place in virtual worlds. Virtual reality is a computer-based technology that provides trainees with a three-dimensional learning experience. This allows simulations to become more realistic. Simulations allow trainees to experience presence, which refers to perceptions of actually being in a particular environment. Presence is influenced by the amount of sensory information available to the trainee, control over the environment, and the ability to modify the environment. Virtual worlds refer to a computer-based, simulated, online, three-dimensional representation of the real world where learning programs can be hosted. An Association of Training and Development survey of learning professionals found that 25% of companies use gamification in learning and 20% use serious games. Simulations can be effective for several reasons. First, trainees can use them on their desktop or notebook computer, eliminating the need for a central training location. Second, simulations are meaningful. They get trainees involved in learning and they're emotionally engaging. Third, simulations provide a consistent message of what needs to be learned. Trainees can work at their own pace and, compared to face-to-face -face instruction, simulations can incorporate more situations or problems that a trainee might encounter. Simulations also do have some disadvantages. The use of simulations has been linked to development costs. Games and simulations are useful for practicing skills, but trainees must first acquire knowledge and then apply it while playing the game. Debriefing learners after a game is useful in helping trainees understand how a simulation experience relates to their work. A customized simulation can cost between $200,000 and $300,000, while a simulation purchased from a supplier without any customization typically costs $100 to $200 per trainee. The average cost for a basic 15-minute game is $20,000 to $30,000, but games can range from $5,000 to $250,000. Mobile technology allows learning to occur anywhere at any time. Mobile learning refers to training delivered using a mobile device such as a smartphone, notebook, notebook computer, or iPad. One estimate is that 17% of U.S. organizations use mobile learning. Mobile learning can involve both formal and informal learning. Formal learning might include e-learning courses, podcasts, or videos on mobile devices. Informal learning includes engaging in communication and messaging with other employees or experts via Twitter, blogs, or Facebook. The advantages of mobile learning include that it is an easy way to get information to employees. It can be useful for enhancing transfer of training, and it brings training to employees traveling. Podcasts are audio or video program content that are distributed in episodes using software such as RSS. The best use of podcasts is for narrative-based content that inspires the user's imagination using music and sound effects. Many companies are using tablets such as iPads for training because of their ease of use, colorful, easy-to-read displays, and ability to connect to the web and availability of powerful applications. Applications, or apps, are designed specifically for smartphones and tablet computers. Apps are primarily being used to supplement training, manage the path or sequence of training, and to help employees maintain training records. For mobile learning to be effective, it needs to be short, 
easy to use and meaningful. One estimate is that the course length should not exceed 10 minutes because users likely do not have long periods of time for learning and attention spans are limited when looking at small screens on mobile devices. Technical requirements due to screen size, web browsers, and mobile operating systems need to be considered, as well as the availability and ability to use plugins such as Flash, Java, and portable document format known as PDF. Also, simply repurposing lectures by digitizing them and distributing them to employees will not facilitate learning. Adaptive training refers to training that customizes or adapts the content presented to the trainee based on their learning style, ability, personality, or performance. These adaptations include the variety, difficulty, and sequencing of content as well as practice problems. In adaptive training, instruction changes based on the trainee's scores on tests or quizzes completed either before the training or at various times as they experience training. This assessment results in adaptations of the content to best help the trainee learn. Online training makes it easier to use ongoing assessments to identify the most effective instructional pathways for learners. The major challenge in developing adaptive training is to ensure that the different content customizations match the learner needs and help them attain the learning objectives. Distance learning is used by geographically dispersed organizations to provide information about new products, policies, procedures, as well as to deliver skills training and expert lectures to field locations. Distance learning can include virtual classrooms, which have the following capabilities. Projection of images, instructor participant audio discussion, sharing of applications, interaction using instant messages, polling technology, and whiteboard marking tools. Distance learning features two way communications between people and it currently involves two types of technology. Teleconferencing refers to synchronous exchange of audio, video, and or text between two or more individuals or groups at two or more locations. Trainees attend training programs in training facilities in which they can communicate with trainers who are at another location and other trainees using the telephone or a personal computer. The second type of distance learning also includes individualized, personal computer-based training. Employees participate in training anywhere they have access to a personal computer. This type of distance learning may involve multimedia training methods such as web-based training. Teleconferencing usually includes a telephone link so that trainees viewing the presentation can call in questions and comments to the trainer. A virtual classroom refers to using a computer and internet to distribute instructor-led training to geographically dispersed employees. The potential advantages of the virtual classroom include its cost savings and convenience. Geographically dispersed employees can be brought together for training for several hours each week, and content experts can be brought into the classroom as needed. There are a number of guidelines for developing effective training in the virtual classroom. Design short modules and follow up with an assignment that applies the learning to the job. Make learning interactive and interesting, such as modeling the program after a phone-in radio show. Include media such as video and audio. Limit classroom size to no more than 25 learners. Offer learners multiple ways of interacting with each other and the instructor, including webinars, emails, discussion rooms, message boards, and blogs. Interactive distance learning, referred to as IDL, refers to the latest generation of distance learning, which uses satellite technology to broadcast programs to different locations and allows trainees to respond to questions posed during the training program. An advantage of distance learning is that the company can save on travel costs. It also allows geographically dispersed sites to receive training from experts who would not otherwise be available to visit the location. Webcasting or web conferencing involves instruction that is provided online through live broadcasts. A high degree of interaction among trainees or between trainees and the trainer is a positive learning feature that is missing from distance learning programs that use technology only to broadcast a lecture to dispersed employees. To engage trainees in a distance learning environment, it's useful to limit online sessions to 60 to 90 minutes in length. A group spokesperson can be assigned to summarize and communicate a group's ideas. 
Weather conditions and satellite glitches can occur at any time, disconnecting the instructor from the audience or making it difficult to show video or other multimedia presentations. Instructors need backup plans for dealing with technical issues. Because many instructors have difficulty speaking to trainees in another location without a live group of trainees in front of them, it's important to prepare instructors for distance delivery. Employees can access these technologies in the work environment. Employees may work some distance away from their manager. The manager may be difficult to contact, or employees may need special expertise that the managers lack. These situations make it difficult for employees to find answers to problems that arise on the job. Training support technologies can assist in transfer of training by helping employees generalize training content in the work environment and by providing employees with the new information they need not covered in training. Expert systems refer to technology that organizes and applies the knowledge of human experts to specific problems. Expert systems have three elements, a knowledge base, a decision-making capability, and a user interface. Expert systems are used as a support tool that employees refer to when they have problems or decisions that they feel exceed their current knowledge or skills. They can also be used to help employees make sense of different conditions and problems and keep track of tasks that need to be completed. Although expert systems are discussed as a technology that supports training, expert systems can also be used as a delivery mechanism. Expert systems can be used to train employees in decision rules of experts. These expert systems can deliver both high quality and lower costs. An electronic performance support system known as an EPSS is an electronic infrastructure that captures, stores, and distributes individual and corporate knowledge assets throughout an organization to enable individuals to achieve performance. An EPSS includes all the software needed to support the work of individuals, not just one or two specific software applications. To use an EPSS as a substitute for training, trainers must determine whether problems and tasks require employees to actually acquire knowledge, skill, or ability. A Learning Management System LMS, refers to a technology platform that can be used to automate the administration, development, and delivery of training programs. LMS provide the ability for users to search the database and their company's intranet simultaneously for information on training courses. An LMS can help a company reduce travel and other costs related to training, reduce time for completion, increase accessibility, and provide administrative capabilities to track program completion and course enrollments. Human Capital Management integrates training with all aspects of human resource functions to determine how training dollars are spent and how training expenses translate into business dollars for the company. An LMS system is also important for organizations to be able to track the number of employees who have completed courses that are required to meet federal, state, or professional regulations. An LMS can help organizations understand the strengths and weaknesses of their employees, including where talent gaps exist. Also, an LMS can be linked to other human resource systems, such as performance management or employee development systems, to identify learning opportunities for employees to strengthen their performance weaknesses. The best uses for classroom instruction may be when trainees need face-to-face -face interaction, instructor support, and visual cues. It's important to note that many organizations recognize the strengths and weaknesses of both traditional training methods and technology-based training methods and are using both in a balanced learning approach. Technology-based training methods, including MOOCs, can be used to provide consistent delivery of training content involving transfer of information, knowledge, and skills to geographically dispersed employees who work at their own pace, practice, and collaborate with the trainer and other trainees online. These trainees can be brought into a central location for face-to-face -face training using traditional methods like classroom, action learning, games, and role plays that emphasizes, through the use of cases and problems, the application of those knowledge and skills.